Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing um, sort of a haul of some supplies that I've gotten over the last month, month and a half, maybe almost two months, but I really need to go through them and put them away so I can actually take them out and use them. So I don't know if I've ever actually done uh, a haul like this on my channel before, but if you like these, let me know down in the comments before below because I can do more, obviously, because I mean, I do buy art supplies, <laughs> let's be honest, but this one might seem a little bit big and I just want to put a disclaimer out here. You know, I don't want you to think I'm showing off um, any art supplies or anything like that. I just figured I'd make a video and then you know sort of what kinds of videos are going to be coming up because I do want to play around and try some of these supplies. Some of them I've never used before, so it'll sort of be like a first impressions, first time uh, trying them, stuff like that. So, and I have purchased these, like I said, over the last couple months. So it's not like this was all one big purchase, but let's just get right into it. And it's going to seem a little random, but I'm going to try to put things together as best as I can. But the first thing I'm going to show you is these Paul Rubens oil pastels. Now, I've been wanting to get into oil pastels, and I was looking at the Sennelier ones. But those are just ridiculously expensive, and I just couldn't justify purchasing those without even having tried oil pastels before. But I found these on Amazon, I believe, and they were actually pretty cheap. So Canadian, I think they were around $30, something like that. I will try to link stuff or put prices down below for you if I can. But, I mean, prices, especially on Amazon, fluctuate so much, so you never know how much they are now. Um, but yeah, I did get these, so I figured I would try these out, and I haven't opened them or anything yet, so I think I'm going to do like an unboxing and like an artwork and try them out, uh, one video doing all that. Then the next thing I got was just this plastic palette from uh, Karen Dosh, and I thought this would be really cool to use with uh, water-soluble stuff, so I have some Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s, which are water-soluble, and uh, especially with my ink tense pencils too. I've been wanting to get the blocks, but I'm waiting for them to go on sale. <laughs> because again, I'm a little too cheap to pay full price for, for most things. So most of the things that you're gonna see in this video were on sale and that's why I bought it. Usually I wait for 30 or 40% off before I'll purchase something unless I really absolutely need it or really, really wanna try it. But this is pretty cool because it has a smooth side here and then it has a textured side. So if you have something like Ink Tense Pencils or the Neo Color 2s, you can put it down on the textured side and it will pick up the color from the crayon or the pencil and then you can use it sort of as a water soluble uh, medium that way. So I wanted to get this and try it uh, that way. Then the next thing I got was this gouache paint set because I've not tried gouache before and I wanted to get this uh, set and try it and I was looking at different ones on Amazon so this again was from Amazon but this one had some really pretty uh, colors in it and it had 24 colors and I will actually show you here because as you can tell the box is empty because I couldn't wait and get uh, and get these out and swatch them so these are the swatches and this is what the packaging actually looks like. So I will be doing a video on this, doing an artwork and testing them out. But I mean, look at the swatches already. The colors are just so vibrant. I did one where it was just thick paint, just paint laid on and then sort of a watered down, almost trying to get to a watercolor consistency. And a lot of these are really opaque. So this will be really fun uh, to play around with. So look for that video coming up. But because I'm a crazy person and I couldn't decide between this gouache set and another one, I also got this one because it just had so many. This one has 56 gouache uh, paint in it. And I liked this one because it already has a lot of some of those, um, can you see this? Some of those lighter tones down. So this one, I feel like you have to use the white to mix into a lot of the colors, whereas this one already has some of those lighter tones ready to go. And I've heard a lot about the Mia and the Himmy gouache, but I've not heard a lot about the Magic Fly uh, gouache. So I feel like I kind of want to do some kind of comparison or something like that. But 
that's um, coming up in the future. So look out for those videos. Oh, and also I got this brush set. So in here, these little black ones came with the Magic Fly uh, gouache. So I used those to do the swatches with the Magic Fly. And then I also got these uh, Hemi brushes here, which I used to do the swatches and just a little playing around with them. Um, I used those with the Mia gouache set. So these were actually pretty nice brushes um, as well. I was kind of surprised. I thought they were going to be more like gimmicky, not very well made, but uh, I actually kind of enjoyed them. So I think I'll be using these more like when I do the artwork for the gouache. So yeah. So the next thing I ended up getting was some pastel stuff. So I already have a set of the 20 pan pastels and I have the Carbothello pastel pencils and I love those. And I've been working with those on a uh, Canson Metiens pastel paper, which is just sort of regular paper. It's got a little bit of um, tooth to it, but it's not gritty or anything. And I've heard a lot about the pastel mat. So I decided to get some pastel mats. Now these were on sale for, I think, 40% off. So I got a few. So I've got two in white to try. And then I got one with um, some different colors there just to try a little bit of different colors. And then because I use my uh, Carbothello pencils a lot, I thought it would be fun to get the uh, Faber the Pit Pastel ones. And these were on sale as well, but they had sold out of the ones that came in the Big Tin version. And they said if I still wanted them, they would send them to me individually, um, which came out to actually be cheaper at the time because the, individually they were on sale <laughs> cheaper than what you would get for the Big Tin. So I said, uh, heck yes, please send them to me. So I got the full set of the uh, Pit Pastel um pastel pencils as well. So th these will be fun to try out and see how they compare to the Carbothello ones. Now I used to do um, a lot more pastel work, but lately, you know, within the last year, I've gotten more into watercolor and colored pencils. And I'm just trying to branch out and try different mediums because I get really bored doing the same thing over and over and the same, using the same medium over and over. So let me know if you're the same way down below and let me know what your preferred medium is because if everybody, you know, would like to see more pastel stuff, I can certainly um, do some videos on that. So let me know. Okay, the next thing I got was just this Legion. Um, this is the Mini Artist Pad Complete Set. Now I've never tried any Legion paper before, so I wanted to give these a try. And so it comes with, and I, I didn't realize how small these books of paper were, but they small, they very small, but I suppose it just gives you enough so that you can try out each paper. So it comes with the Stonehenge Craft, the Stonehenge Light, the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, Yupo Heavy, Yupo Medium, Yupo Translucent. I'm not even sure what the difference between any of those are, but apparently there is the Aqua Hot Press, the Aqua Cold Press. Wait, didn't we just get something cold press? There was Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. This is, oh, this is Aqua Cold Press Heavy. Okay, let's put those together and we'll put the hot press with those. Okay, so that's heavy. Actually, let's just see. Oh, this is, uh, oh, that's actually a nice, kind of textured it's not quite as textured so this is just the regular cold press it's not quite as textured as the like arches paper but I just wanted to see how the weight differed oh that is thick so this must be like a three 300 pound paper I'm assuming I wonder if it says anywhere yeah okay it's a 300 pound weight paper and this one is 140 so that's really thick because I've not even tried the arches um really thick paper like that so that'll kind of be cool to play around with although I mean it's so small you can't do much but at least they give you a few sheets of it um and then we've got the cold pressed black the cotton the warm white 
uh, just regular white and Stonehenge colors. Oh, I didn't realize they made like a colors one. So it looks like there's white, like a white maybe. Are those all the same? No, it looks like a little bit of a warmer, pinkier white. This is sort of like a cream white. And then you can see a little bit of a difference to the side, I hope. And then there's sort of like a beigey brown, a gray, and that's it. So those will kind of be interesting. Maybe I'll do, you know, since they're so small, I might do a video just reviewing all of them or something like that or trying all of them. But let me know which ones you're interested in seeing um, how they work. Because again, I've never used the the Stonehenge papers before. So I got this, it was, I think maybe $15 or something like that. So I thought that was a pretty good price to try out all these uh, different papers. So the next thing I got were these little um, suction cup thingies that you put, uh, it's called a paint puck. So it's a brush cleaner. And what you do is you put them in the bottom of your cup, essentially, and it helps um, clean your paint brushes. Now, I don't normally have trouble with them uh, with watercolor, but I kind of wanted to try them out just to see, um, and maybe even with the gouache, because I found the gouache was a little bit harder to get out of the paintbrushes um, versus watercolor. So basically you just like drop it in and it would suction to the bottom of it and then you would rub your paintbrush over top of it. And it seems like it's, like it's very soft, like it's a very soft uh, silicone type thing. So I don't think it would end up hurting any of your watercolor brushes. Um, so that's kind of cool. So I wanted to get those to try that out. So then I just got this Winsor & Newton designer gouache and this is in permanent white. Now this is one of my favorite uh, white gouaches, especially when I'm going over watercolor, if I wanna do like a starry night sky or if I wanna get any white highlights, um, this is my, my favorite gouache for doing that. I find it's pretty much the most opaque one that I've tried. Um, so yeah, I wanted to get a nice big tube of that so I wouldn't run out of it too soon. Then I decided just to get a few things of watercolor. So this is the M Graham watercolors and I wanted to try out a couple different things. I was looking to get um, some because I had just started my M Graham watercolor palette not long ago maybe a month or two ago I got a set of M Graham watercolors and I love them so much I want to keep trying to get a couple colors here and there I wanted to try their white and their black as well I have their black um, gouache and I love it hands down it's my favorite super opaque I use that to go over my watercolors as well but I also got um, raw umber cobalt teal because I thought this was just such a pretty color uh, cadmium yellow because the set that I came with only came with a cool yellow I believe I think it was either Hansa yellow or lemon yellow something like that but it was a cool yellow and I got Prussian blue yellow ochre and I also got the white because I wanted to try instead of using um, white gouache because as I said the Winsor & Newton white gouache is super opaque um, so if I ever wanted to try to make some pastel colors with my watercolors, I thought maybe just using a watercolor white might be better. So I might try that out sometime and see how that goes. Okay, so if you've been watching my channel from the beginning, you'll know that I started off doing uh, watercolor Christmas cards. That was just a series that I decided I was going to do on YouTube. I was doing my cards anyway, and I thought, well, I'll record it and see how it goes. And then I ended up enjoying it. So I've kept up my uh, channel. But I started with the Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors and I had been using those forever and ever. So I thought it was time to try the Winsor & Newton professional watercolors. So again, these were on sale, I think for like 40%. So please don't judge me. But I not only got one, I got a bunch. So... <laughs> Yes, I might be a crazy person, but that's a debate for another day. But I got these because I I just love watercolor. It's what I've started with. It's sometimes my medium of choice. Um, and I've never, I have a couple 
of the Winter Newton Professional colors that I, you know, put into my Cotman palette just because I wanted those colors specifically. But I think it's time to have the Winter Newton Professionals have their own palette. So with that being said, I also had to get another one of my favorite palettes. So I got this on Amazon and it's the same palette that I have for my Cotman, my uh, Daniel Smith and my M. Graham because I just find it's the perfect um, mix of lots of space but yet it doesn't take up a lot of space and everything comes out. So this mixing palette can come out if you want to, you know, take it out and take it with you. Or if you've got colors on here that you want to dry, you can take it out and close up your palette and let it dry. This also does come out um, if sometimes you have to like get something. I don't want to break a nail getting it out, but there we go. So this can come out too, so you can have an extra mixing space down here, or you can take this palette out completely, you know, close it up. Um, but I suggest when you're done to, you know, keep everything in here and close it up so your um, colors don't dry out too much, depending if that's what you want. If you want to keep them, like my M. Graham stay a little bit moist because of the honey in the binder. Same with the Daniel Smith. They haven't quite... Um, completely dried up yet but my Cotman's have and so here's the thing and the dilemma I noticed when I bought this palette I thought oh I'll get the cute pink one because I have the black one for my M. Grams, the blue one for my Daniel Smith but lo and behold I didn't realize that I also had the pink one for my Cotman watercolors so here's these and as you can see the Cotman have dried up completely like they're completely dry but they're super rewettable um, I use these still all the time, but I thought it was just time to upgrade and try the professional out. So I might make a whole video of this if you want to see that of me just, you know, putting the palette together, maybe trying them out. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see that video. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to do something to kind of dif differ between these two. And I've been getting stickers from Smart Art and Palletful. So I'm thinking I might be putting the stickers on the Cotman one just because I have no place to put those stickers really. And then it would kind of um, let me know which is which. But yeah, so this will probably be a video coming out in the future. Okay, so the next thing I got was this white... Um, and it actually came broken, which I'm a little disappointed about, but not super bad. But this is the White Intense Block from Derwent. And this is supposed to be um, super opaque. So if you've ever tried the Intense Pencil White, it's not really that opaque. It is when you put it on dry, but when you wet it, it's not very opaque. But this is supposed to dry super opaque. So I wanted to try this. Um, to go along with my intense pencils when I need some white highlights and I don't want to go on top with gouache or a gel pen or something like that. So I got this to try out and I mean I'm okay that it's broke because I'm probably just going to put it in a little dish and I'm going to wet it anyway. It's going to work just fine but I did get that to try and I am keeping an eye on the intense block set to see if it actually does go on sale or not. <laughs> So I may get that. I just don't want to pay full price for it. So the next thing I got were just some watercolor brushes. And these ones here um, kind of intrigued me. These are called Deerfoot uh, brushes. And this is from Princeton. This is a 5 8 And this is a quarter inch Deerfoot brushes. And what they are is like they're brushes that will splay out. And you can do details in painting. So you can either do like little bushes or little trees, or you can, um, you know, splay them out and get some fur texture. So I thought that would be kind of interesting to play around with and try to see what kind of textures or what kind of fur textures you could get because I do have brushes like these that I use a lot that are, and this is again from Princeton, um, that they're just, what are they called? Like detail brushes or this one says it's a grainer brush so it's just got like some of the bristles missing towards the top so they splay out a little bit and you can get some fur detail that way or different textures 
And then I also saw this um, Artist Loft one. This was on sale. So I got this one as well just to try um, because I thought it was kind of neat how these ones are so soft and plushy, but this one is really hard. So I wanted to see what kind of different textures you could get with those. So I'll probably do some kind of video um, because I know a lot of people liked the little bunny watercolor painting that I did and I can link that down below. But I used one of the, these brushes here to get some fur textures. So I think I might do um, a video trying these and to see what kind of fur textures you can make or maybe just a general video on like how to create some fur textures. So we'll see how that goes. And then if anybody knows my watercolor paintings, I absolutely love my silver black velvet brushes. So I just wanted to pick some more up. So I got a size 10, a size eight, because I pretty much use a size eight for mostly everything. I also got a size four and a size two. And then I wanted to try out this size one uh, liner brush. It's like a script liner brush. So this would make some really fine lines, but even with my size four that I have, I just wanted to get a backup of it because these were again, like 40% off. So of course I had to buy more, <laughs> but um, even with the size four here, I can get some really fine lines. So I kind of wanted to see how much finer this one could get. And then I decided to get a flat wash one. So this is a three quarter flat wash. And then I was debating between the half inch and the quarter inch. And I kind of wish I would have went with the half inch instead of the quarter, because as you can see, that is quite small compared to that. So I don't know how much use I'll get out of this brush, but I'm sure I'll find something to do with it because even 40% off, I paid enough for this brush. So I will be finding a way to use it. The next thing I got was just some charcoals and these are from General. And these were kind of interesting to me because they weren't ones that you would sharpen. Um, these are ones where once you start wearing it down, you pull the little piece of string there and they unwrap. So I wanted to try that. I've not used charcoal a whole lot, but I'd like to get into so sort of some charcoal drawings or even doing like some tone drawings where you just use like a black and a white pencil and try to make something like that. Um, but I've been kind of quite intrigued. So I got those and then I also saw these ones that were in the pencil form that you would sharpen, but it also came with a white charcoal. So that's where I got the idea of maybe using like a toned paper, like I had the Strathmore toned tan and the Strathmore toned gray papers. So I kind of got the idea of trying to do um, a drawing on that and just using, you know, the black and the white for your highlights and your darks and letting the paper be the mid-tone. So if you want to see something like that, let me know down in the comments below. But um, I think I'm going to try something like that. And then I couldn't decide which ones I wanted to get, so I ended up getting both. <laughs> and then the last thing I got was just this Arches paper, and these are Arches blocks. And again, I got these because they were 40% off at the time. So I got the hot pressed one and this is in seven by 10. This is usually the, the size that I go to um, when I'm doing any watercolor or even color pencil stuff. Um, and I like, I like it in the blocks, even if I'm doing colored pencils, because if I decide I wanna do a watercolor wash in the background, it's really nice because the block holds your paper nice and flat. Now the difference with the arches, most watercolor blocks will have white on the sides, but arches has black and that throws off a lot of people, but it's just the exact same thing. Um, you just do your piece and then once you're done, you can take a knife or whatever and go along the edges. There's usually um, a spot where it will tell you, you know, where you can get your knife in and go along. And I have a video showing you how to take uh, paper off a block as well. So if you're interested in that, I'll try to link it down below or put a card or something, or you can go look it up on my channel as well. So I got it in hot pressed and then I got two in cold press. Um, Arches is my hands down favorite watercolor paper. So I do like to have some on hand. Um, I am trying to branch out and try different ones. And a new favorite of mine is actually the Academy watercolor paper. And I've been using that in the last few vi videos because I did run out of my arches, but now that I've got them, I'll, you'll probably see a few videos um, using these as well. So I got one in cold pressed of seven by 10 and one of nine by 12. 
So that's everything that I got in this haul. And like I said before, this was over a couple of months. So it's not like I went out and spent a bunch of money at once. I've just sort of been picking up little things here and there. And I thought, well, I need to start using this stuff so I should make a video of it so I can, you know, tear into things and start using them. But thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you wanna see, you know, artworks done with any of these supplies or if you want to see more videos like this please let me know down in the comments below be sure to subscribe hit the notification bell and give a like to the video um, if you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching and as always I will see you in the next video bye